Hi, uh, welcome to episode number 17 of Spontaneous Conversations. Uh, this is Ravi Gundlapalli, founder CEO of Mentor Cloud. Hi, this is Rajesh uh, Sethi. I'm a serial entrepreneur and a co-conspirator with Ravi on this uh, Spontaneous Conversation series. Excellent, Rajesh. So the topic, uh, Rajesh, we selected is something that um, a lot of people come to me with. Uh, so I thought will be will be a good conversation to have is when does a person who is working full time in a company and has a bunch of ideas, which was the topic for the previous uh, episode, is when do they make the transition from being an employee to actually becoming a full time entrepreneur? Yes. I think that's a problem that many people uh, face. So I just wanted us to discuss what are some of those checklists or things that an individual should look at before they make the switch, a very, very important switch at that. Yeah, it's a great topic, Ravi, only because we both can relate to it. We both can relate to it very well because we both were employees and we became entrepreneurs and somebody somewhere always switches from that employee to an entrepreneur kind of thing. So I was talking to uh, Desh Deshpande, founder of Sycamore Networks and all those things on the same topic. And he was saying, yeah. So it relates very well. And uh, Desh was mentioning that during his speaking engagements and in general, because he is a multi-billionaire and a very, very successful entrepreneur, people keep coming and asking him one question. He says, I have this idea. Uh, and then uh, I think it's going to be a fantastic idea, Desh. Should I do it? And the Desh's answer always is, don't. And I asked him, why would he say that? He said, he's, he said something very interesting, Ravi. He said, if somebody is waiting for an external validation to start on something, they're not ready for it yet. It's it beautiful. To, the validation has to come from the inside. Inside. And he was telling uh, the key word, Raj, he said, is conviction. What is the level of conviction you have on your idea? And he gave a beautiful analogy, Ravi, and I want to share it. Mm, please. And he said, uh, hey, Raj, imagine uh, as a young kid, they brought you your first bicycle. It so happened that you learned to ride a bicycle, and the first bicycle, they bought it, uh, your parents. And then uh, you are ready to ride it, but it's already, uh, the sun has set and it's going to be night. And then there's, uh, you want to quickly assemble it and ride it and uh, you, the parents told you that, uh, hey, uh, you can't ride it today because it's already evening. Tomorrow morning you can ride it. And imagine what you would have done that whole night. You almost would have not slept thinking, God, has, when will the sun rise and then I want to ride it. That's the kind of wanting you need to have in the entrepreneurial world for you to say, you know, I'm ready to jump in. That's a great story. Uh, I mean, because an entrepreneur have to have that, you know, childlike curiosity, childlike energy, childlike belief. Um, so the story is really, uh, you know, very appropriate. And, uh, and and having that conviction from the inside, I think, is a, is a very important, you know, checklist. Yes. You know, am I, am, I, am, am I ready for it? And even if the entire world says no, now we talked about the customer validation, idea validation. So um, I think while you are working, it is I, I would recommend people to validate their idea and to make sure that there is there is something there. It's not a feature; it's a full product. Um, and then, but when you when you are really uh, fully convinced and are willing to give your hundred percent, maybe two hundred percent, from our own experiences of being an entrepreneurs entrepreneurs. Um, so uh, I think that that's that's a great story from very very successful entrepreneur, and I made the switch when I look back at my own journey. Is I was really convinced that I I saw something, and it was bugging me, and uh, I am reminded of a quote by India's president, former president, uh, who who recently you know passed away, Dr. Abdul Kalam. He said, "Dream is not what you see when you're asleep." dream is what keeps you awake Beautiful. so for me personally rajesh that desire to do what i'm doing today was keeping me awake yeah i just couldn't wait for me to do this and i just had to one day just cut it and do it and of course i uh, there are a few others that i want to say when when to do it and what what are the checks and balances you want to keep you know before you do that but it's the dream that keeps you awake yeah yeah Desh also continued, uh, Ravi, and he, of course he's always super insightful and he said, 
a time to do it is when not doing it is no longer optional for you it is so you are so much of convinced about the idea and you are committed to the idea it's like you can't not do it anymore that that time has to come and uh, uh, i want to step back once why people will not make that switch i want to talk about yes, this because, yes right? because that's where they are stuck uh, rajesh yeah. And most people are stuck because there's some fear something like that but yeah please elaborate on yeah. why that switch doesn't happen the switch does not happen ravi because think about it as you got older the stakes get higher to make that switch in many ways one is professionally the other is personally correct so when uh, you are young you are not married this trip suppose something goes wrong or anything the only person that will be affected is you right as you get older you get married and now let think of one more person at least saying that i can take a rash decision or a risky decision but i have to make sure that one more person is covered because it's not just you once you get a kid and once you have kids then you have depending on how many kids you have it's the uh, the risk factor multiplies correct then you buy a home so and when you buy a home uh, now you have to think about um, not just one person your kids now i have to say by the way i have to worry about the mortgage right correct because so it's a just, family it's the mortgage what yes. else and after that uh, you have uh, also got aging parents so because just it's not just your uh, family and kids but it's also the parents siblings and everything because they are also getting older so the chains of uh, uh, what can go wrong what can break keeps getting higher and plus that is on the personal side professional side there is a whole other intellectual problem the fact that you got an idea and you want to pursue it you must be really smart right that where did you get that smart label is because you are very good in your current job correct right so when you have that really good smart label attached to it in your own world you are very smart people know you but suddenly you are play now playing another game where you are not that smart because you have never done it before so Correct. so people are afraid that in this new space uh, do, do you have the the capacity and the wisdom to exactly. survive on your own versus being under the umbrella of a large corporation right exactly. so that's where the fear comes in rajesh uh, because they are afraid that you know can i manage yes there is a third one which is even deeper but uh, that never gets discussed is be, is do you have enough reciprocity built in in your bank account so that when you leave and embark on a journey the people who are all your friends because you were in a good position in a big company will they come and support you in a venture that has 90% chance of failure you know that's a fantastic point can i elaborate on yes, that yes. Um, because you know in my own journey rajesh um, the day i decided to become an entrepreneur and i told people by then i have already earned a lot of that so called you know uh, what did you call reciprocity. that reciprocity reciprocity question right i think just to expand on that word that's a very complicated word but once you explain it it is about what have you done to other people yes you know you have you should be helping a lot of people by, and being able to build that question that when you do need help because as an entrepreneur rajesh you and i know we need help yes. we are all alone in a company you have secretaries you have everything you have benefits as an entrepreneur you have nothing so unless you have built enough of that that so called deposit of of goodwill i don't think you should jump and yes. many people make the mistake and they then they fail as an entrepreneur because nobody wants to give them yes and for me personally i'm i'm so grateful i kind of realized this early on I didn't do this because I want to be an entrepreneur. I think we all should be working towards building that reciprocity quotient or or so called gratuity quotient by helping people as much as possible because that deposit will come to you handy when yes. you become an entrepreneur. Correct. So in my opinion Ravi I always think what makes an entrepreneur successful there are many many skills right but I always think that do you have push button access to great help? and uh, because you will never be able to figure out everything there is so many moving parts the product has to be right user interface has to be right and sales there is distribution channel there is teamwork and 
uh, competition that's catching up there is no way you will be able to figure out everything imagine at the push of a button you get access to amazing help and insight automatically the odds of succeeding goes up but many times people don't realize that lot of their friends are friends professionally because of their current position in their big company oh that's a that's an again a very important element i think rajesh that you bring up is just because you are doing extremely well in the corporate world it does not guarantee your success as an entrepreneur correct um, because you are under an umbrella you are yes. under, under a very protective environment uh, where people who are nice to you because of your position like you said they either report to you or they are doing a project with you but once you are on your own there's no obligation exactly there's no professional obligation to work with you to help you and uh, so that's a very very important checklist item correct to and to add to the complexity ravi if you start meeting someone to validate the idea when you are in a big position they will definitely give you that meeting because they want to be they want to be nice to you and you still have hold that position in that big company so obviously you will think look at me i'm so smart i'm just asking a lot of my professional friends for a meeting to discuss my idea and that there it's so simple they are just meeting me they are not interested in the idea they are interested in continuing to build that relationship with you it's a courtesy meeting yeah so another checklist is when you are meeting people to validate your idea when you are ready to switch from being an employee to an entrepreneur being able to screen those courtesy meetings versus people that are genuinely willing to work with you help you open their network put some money or maybe join you you have to be able to screen that correct because courtesy meetings will not do anything because they are doing not, themselves a favor yes. they're not doing anything to you correct because they they think that uh, by meeting they are uh, they took care of your request and in the process they now earned uh, a right to make another request for you that might help them pursue whatever they want to pursue because of your position the second kind of meetings that come up are curiosity meetings because everybody wants to know what's happening yeah what are you doing yeah. what's the idea <laughs> correct and they may not, they may not even be interested in doing anything with you but they are just curious and they know that you are very successful in your current position what kind of an idea that ravi or raj have come up with i'm just curious and they will ask you a lot of questions and uh, almost makes you feel like oh, they are really interested they are really interested just to know what you are doing correct not to help yes not to help so i think uh, you know i think this is another to- important topic to expand on but a few things to kind of you know bring everything together is make sure you have built enough help quotient that people are willing to help when you need it and you will need lots of it when you are alone make sure that your you know safety net in terms of savings in terms of your family in terms of your parents and children there is enough safety net built that even if things go don't go well for a year two years you can sustain and make sure that uh, all the all the validation that we talked about in the previous episode of your idea and how big it is and there are people that are willing to put money and time into your uh, so i would say those are the three things that come to my mind yeah uh i in closing we are coming to about 14 minutes so in closing what i want to say ravi is that uh do you have people say you know, do you have a plan b i always say before you jump in i always ask people do you have a plan d and it's not plan a b c and d it's doomsday plan if everything goes south do you have a plan d to recover from it without risking your family and the structure and not causing uh, hard burn for people that love you and also your own reputation because you don't want to short change anyone so the only way to do it is like you rightly said you build a lot of good karma correct so correct and you will need lots of it as an entrepreneur because we have all been helped as entrepreneurs you know both me and rajesh can clearly vouch for the fact that we are who we are today because many people have helped us and because and and the reason they are they helped us is because we have done some good karma ourselves you know mentoring people helping people guiding them making them successful and using our time because it's all it all comes back to you yes correct so with that you know uh, this is ravi gundlapalli and i encourage everybody to think like an entrepreneur but really go through this 
very important checklist items before you make the switch so that you can save yourself a lot of grief. Ravi Gundlapalli, founder CEO of Mentor Club. And this is Rajesh Sethi signing off. You can read more about me at rajeshsethi.com. Until next time, goodbye.